Hey, what's up? If you're not familiar, butter chicken is a Northern Indian dish that's essentially creamed spiced tomato sauce with a bunch of chopped up charred chicken in it. Despite it being super complicated in terms of flavor, it's actually super simple to make at home. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a creamy, luxurious butter chicken at home that's actually two recipes at the same time. To get started, I'm gonna need two pounds or one kilo of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. If there's any excessive fat attached to these things, I think it's a good idea to zip that out. Mainly because this dish is already quite fatty and pretty rich on its own and we definitely don't need any additional chunks of fat at the party. Once these are all cleaned up, I'm gonna move them over into a medium bowl so that I can throw a tandoori-ish marinade on them, starting with 20 grams of salt, 10 grams of minced garlic, 10 grams of minced ginger. For me, the best way to get both garlic and ginger to fully integrate into a marinade is probably with a microplane. You could use a knife, but that's gonna leave chunks of garlic and ginger on the outside of the meat that will probably burn when we cook these over high heat. Next up is 20 grams of lemon juice, or about a half lemon's worth, and three grams of ground fenugreek. If you haven't heard of it, fenugreek is very unique. It smells kind of like celery and maple syrup mixed together, and I love it in this marinade. It punches right through all that heavy, creamy sauce, but if you can't find ground fenugreek or you don't have it on hand, sub in garam masala. Up next is 10 grams of cashmere chili powder. This stuff is super fruity and a lot spicier than Western chili powder, and if you don't have it, it's probably right next to the fenugreek in the international grocery store. Finally, in goes 200 grams of Greek yogurt and 25 grams of neutral oil. Now with gloves on, I'm gonna dive into this bowl and get marinade all over everything. I said earlier that this was a tandoori-ish style chicken, mainly because we're not cooking it in a 900 degree tandoor oven, but also because my version is based purely on what I think tastes good and some people will think that it lacks authenticity, which is fine with me. Whatever it's called, I think this chicken is gonna taste very good. Once that's all caked up with orange yogurt, the lid's gonna go on and we're gonna let this marinate in the fridge for about a half hour while I get the rest of this dish put together. Now I'm gonna preheat a medium tall sided saucepan over medium high heat. In goes three to four glugs of olive oil or a rough 30 grams. And once that oil's hot, in goes 150 grams or a roughly one whole medium onion small diced. Behind that goes 50 grams of poblano peppers that are also small diced. I opted for the small dice on both of these vegetables because we want them to be fully softened and melted into the background of the sauce after only about 20 to 25 minutes of cooking. And that means no chunky stuff. A strong pitch of salt behind those veggies and then we're gonna give that a stir to combine and let this fry up in the oil for about five to six minutes or until things are getting all softened and translucent like this. At this point, we're gonna add in 10 grams of grated ginger and 10 grams of minced garlic. I'm gonna give that a stir to combine and let all those aromatic veggies fry up for about another 60 seconds to maybe 90 seconds or until they're getting fragrant and just starting to take on some color. Next thing in is a bunch of spices. This is a combination of five grams of garam masala, very fragrant, warm, kind of sweet if you've never used it, I love it. Five grams of turmeric, five grams of cumin, five grams of coriander, five grams of that nuclear red cashmere chili powder that we talked about earlier, and then 10 grams of salt. All those spices are gonna get stirred up to combine with the veggies, and we're gonna let this fry for another 60 to 90 seconds or so. And after about 30 to 40 seconds of frying this stuff off, the aromas and the spices should have been released, and all of the fabrics in your house, including your couch and any carpeting, should smell like an Indian restaurant. Once we're there, we're gonna add in a whole can of tomato paste, a small one, about 165 grams worth, and then we're gonna stir that up to fry it off and bloom it just like the spices. After about a minute or so of frying this off, this tomato paste should have just a little bit of color on it. And now I'm gonna add in 425 grams of water and stir everything up to get that tomato paste dissolved. From there, I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and bring this whole thing up to a very gentle simmer. Now I'm gonna pop a lid on this pot and let it cook over low heat for about 15 to 20 minutes while I preheat my oven and take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Ritual. Over the last three months or so, I've been taking Ritual vitamins every day to try and make up for some of the deficiencies left from constantly eating pizza in videos on the internet. Taking a daily vitamin like Ritual gets me what pizza cannot, like omega-3s, for example. Pretty sure pizza does not have any O3s in there. Recently, I got to try some of their new essential protein powder, and it's coming really handy for recovery, actually. My main exercise right now is rock climbing in the gym, and anyone who's rock climbed before knows that you get super sore afterwards, especially if you go bouldering, and that Ritual protein shake afterwards has been a great great post climbing way to rebuild some lean muscle. The protein shake has all nine essential amino acids. It's got no added sugar and it has Madagascar vanilla in it. That sounds fun. And the entire supply chain is transparent and traceable too, which is huge for supplements. That means no sketchy ingredients. So to give Ritual a try, click the link in my description and use the code 10 Brian for a very generous 10% off your first three months. For just over a dollar a day, you can get pea protein that's regeneratively farmed here in the United States and it tastes quite good. Thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. Now,
Now this oven's been preheated to 450F or 232C. And next, I'm gonna grab the marinating chicken thighs out of the fridge. From there, I'm gonna grab a half sheet tray and line that with some foil that's gonna keep the tray from getting scorched under the broiler. I wanna mention real quick that when it comes to marination time, most people will say more is more, but usually that's not really been my experience. If you look at these thicker marinades, like the orange yogurt paste on these thighs, there's no way that we're gonna have a hard time getting that flavor to stick to the meat. So 30 minutes is more than enough in my opinion. Once this chicken's all laid out, now I'm gonna load them into an oven. Again, that was preheated to 450F or 232C, and we're gonna cook these all the way through with regular heat before we char them under the broiler, and that should take about 15 minutes. Now, while those roast, we're definitely needing to get set up on some good tasting rice. For that, I've got my very beat up, trusty $25 rice cooker here, and into that, I'm gonna measure 300 grams of the rice of your choice. I'm using a medium grain Calrose rice here. That's one of my favorite ingredients of all time. Behind that comes 425 grams of water, and then eight grams of salt. And oh yeah, since this is butter chicken, we also need some butter in this rice. So I'm gonna lop off a big dog chunk of some nice grass fed butter and throw that into the rice. From there, we're gonna scoop this out of the way and put it on the back counter. I'm gonna dial in some buttons here and then let this perfect little machine do all the hard work. Back at the chicken, it's been roasting at 450F for 15 minutes and now it's fully cooked through. The exterior has dried up just a little bit also, which is making way for some nice caramelization under the broiler. So I'm gonna turn this tray sideways now so that it lines up directly under the broiler and then I'm gonna turn that on to high. If you don't have a hot broiler in your house, I would definitely recommend to cook these thighs on the grill outside. Now I'm gonna try these thighs under the intense flame of this broiler for about five to six minutes or until they're starting to get crisp on the edges and starting to take on some aggressive color. Now, after that six minutes, these are really looking good and charred on the top side, but we also wanna hit the back sides. We really don't want any pasty, steamed, yogurty stuff going on. So we're gonna take these out, flip over the thighs real quick, and then we're gonna load them back under the broiler for another three to four minutes or so. After that three to four minutes, you guys, wow. This is serious food now. We've gotten that backside nicely roasted. And when I flip it over, you can see that top side is well charred and crisp and just deeply, deeply orange. But I wanna taste this and let you guys know what I think. Mm. I'm thrilled with how this chicken tastes. Considering it was baked in an oven, it tastes kind of like it was cooked on the grill. It's a little bit charred, it's a little bit crisp around the edges. It's got some acidity from that yogurt and it's super savory. One last thing I wanna say about this is that you can do a lot with it other than putting it into butter chicken sauce. You can put this on a sandwich or maybe even turn it into an Indian flavored chicken salad. All of those are dope. I just wanted to highlight that this chicken by itself is a great standalone recipe, but these thighs need to rest up a little bit before we go ahead and cut them up. So let's get back to the sauce. This stuff has been stewing over here for about 20 minutes over low heat and everything's melted into a more unified front and it looks amazing. Now we're gonna add in 10 grams of sugar. That's essential to balance out the acidity from this tomato and then 210 grams of heavy cream or about one cup. I'm gonna stir that up until it turns bright orange. That's always fun looking and then finally the butter part of this butter chicken goes in. I'm adding in 50 grams or about three tablespoons of unsalted Kerrygold butter. A little bit of grassiness from the Kerrygold is going to bring just one more layer of flavor and a little bit of funkiness to the party for this sauce. Once that's all stirred up and fully emulsified I'm going to give this a quick puree with my immersion blender. You don't have to puree this you could leave it a little bit thinner with chunks of onion and poblano hanging out in there. That would be a little bit more rustico it would also taste very delicious but spinning it up with the immersion blender is going to bring just a little bit more body and heft to the sauce and it's gonna stick to the chicken a little bit better. That looks great. Speaking of chicken, these chicken thighs have been fully rested and now they're ready to chop. For this dish, we want medium sized chunks. So we're gonna cut the thighs in half and then across three to four times so that they're about one and a half inches square. Once that chicken is fully chopped up, we're gonna grab the sauce and then slide it on in. Next, we're gonna give that a stir to combine and make sure that chicken gets really nicely coated in the sauce. If you started with two pounds of chicken thighs, you should be sitting on the perfect ratio right now of sauce to meat. And that looks perfectly sauced. Let's plate this up. First thing down is a big pile of that buttery Calrose rice, perfectly cooked, I should mention, by my $25 food robot. Behind that comes a healthy serving of creamy, buttery, spicy, perfumed butter chicken. Go heavy on that stuff and get a bunch of sauce on top. Next, and this is an important stuff, to cut through all the fat of that butter chicken sauce, we're gonna top this with a little bit of seasoned yogurt sauce. For that, I'll combine 100 grams of Greek yogurt, 100 grams of heavy cream, or milk if you want it a little bit thinner, and then three grams of salt. I'll give that a stir until the yogurt is properly thinned out, and once it's saucy like this, it's good to go. That little bit of lactic acidity from the yogurt is really gonna brighten this dish up and bring some instant contrast. From there, we're gonna finish with some picked cilantro leaves. That seems like a beautiful, appropriate way to finish this dish, and this is what I think 
think great butter chicken looks like. It's saucy and rich and full of life. It's dishes like this that make me wanna cook Indian food at home more often. It's a lot of fun and I really hope you give it a try. Let's eat this thing.